Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm TY, a Nigerian living in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, yay, welcome back. So, in this video, we are going to be gisting about the process of traveling or relocating to Canada and then shopping. So, basically, gist and shop. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, so we got back from Winners for the winter jacket shop. Just few. We'll go back for it when we are done clearing our distance. So now we are going to Dolorama. It's not far from where we are currently. Just want to go and check anything to buy. So come with me. Another walk to Dolorama. Let me carry my pet bag. <laughs> In case the search come, I buy a bag. Mm. Shopping bag. Okay. See you guys later. <laughs> If you've been wondering what are the procedures for obtaining a visa from Nigeria to Canada, asking, interested, or you just want to understand how to come to Canada, then this video is for you. So subscribe, like, share, turn on your notification bell so you can be notified when I post more videos, right? And I've said everything. I've been, yeah, subscribe, like, share. <laughs> okay disclaimer eh? first of all i'm not an immigration consultant or specialist i'm just sharing my knowledge to help and educate people based on my experience and research convenience store is it just flowers because to me convenience store is like grocery store but it's different to a market and i notice most of them are 10 hours also the fact that i would like this information in like a simplified form if i'm also planning to move like now so without further ado let's dive into it so this is basically like a comprehensive guide on how you can move to canada so we'll be covering various pathways requirements the cost transition and more right just stick around and let's get into this just sharp sharp <laughs> so first of all let's talk about the different pathways everything i'm going to be saying i will try to simplify it as much as possible there are different pathways to canada let's say they fall under two branches tr means temporary residence like temporary residency and pr and the pr means permanent residency i'm sure we are used to pr 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 i'm sure we must have heard it many times if you are coming in any of the two you know you have to get the visa right let's break it further they have what you do so for TR, you can come to visit, you can come to Canada to study, or you're coming to work. If you're coming to visit, that means you get your visitor's visa. I mean, if you're coming to visit, it means it's just temporary, right? So for people like this, they come for tourism, family visits, or business trips. So it's a temporary visa for those visiting Canada for this purpose. Now, for eligibility or requirements or like application process, you have to show them that, oh, you have a valid reason for visiting and maybe oh, I'm coming to meet my grandchildren. You must have sufficient funds and you provide necessary documents like valid passport, proof of fund, that's proof of financial means to cover your stay in Canada, evidence of ties to Nigeria. This is also like part of convincing them that, oh, they want to know that, oh, you're coming to visit, right? That means you're going to go back. Mm -hmm. So evidence of um, ties to can to Nigeria, like your employment. Maybe you're working back in Nigeria. You're like, Asha, I cannot leave my work and come here, right? Or maybe you have properties in Nigeria, business or family. So just to ensure that you return after your visit. And then you have to um, do, I think, like police reports, like just to confirm that you don't have any criminal record. And also medical examination might be required. Now for the application process, you gather your documents, all of it once I've mentioned, invitation letter and any other supporting documents right you complete your application you feel all those all those things let me not go into those details right so this is just a comprehensive guide so that we don't spend so much time pay the fees submit the application you do your biometrics attend interview and then you wait for decision so that's for the visitors visa requirements eligibility and application process number two study so if you're coming to study it means that you're going to get like a study permit or you're studying at a designated learning institution in canada and meaning there are some institutions or schools here that are not designated for such so <laughs> ensure that whichever school they are applying to ensure that they are actually designated learning institution this is for those who want to pursue their education in canada basically you have to get acceptance letter from the designated learning institution in canada that i mentioned earlier and um, you have to have proof of funds for your school fees, institution, living expenses, and probably like return travel, right? No criminal record, your medical examination if required. So you submit a study permit application to IRCC, that's the Canadian website. 
along with your proof of funds and other required documents okay so for the application process you gather the documents acceptance letter from a canadian institution proof of fund passports and supporting documents just like i've mentioned complete the application pay your fees submit the application do your biometrics and set interview and then you wait for the decision the application process is almost like you know the same right the third one is if you are coming to you are coming to work so for those working in canada so this one the way it works is basically oh like employer in canada will say okay oh we need somebody from another country meaning that they've checked in-house like they've checked the whole of canada they did not see the person they did not get employee right that can help them sort out whatever they want to sort out right so they've searched in house to no avail and they will now say oh, okay talk to canadian government okay we need other people you know skilled workers from another country they will need to pay the canadian government actually so bringing in people like if they're bringing you in it's not cheap on their part as well right that's when you see most times it requires like technical skills or expertise like maybe people in tech you know and some other um like specific um skills like that's all just skills that you know that oh you have to bring people from outside like they can't get here then then we have your work permits now these permits can be a closed work permit or employer specific and open work permit when it's open open work permits it means you can work for any employer in canada right so you're not restricted if it's a closed work permit that means that you can only work for a particular employer maybe for a particular time right so that's what that means employer specific permit requires lmia where the employer proves they need you for a specific job so in the process of this after like they've said oh we need somebody what they, we get is called lmia labor market impact assessment that's a full meaning so they will give they will give you lma that's if you when you hear lma work lma work the i think that's like the permission to work here something like that so employers may sponsor you and cover your expenses but it's not common right and it's usually it applies to like highly skilled position maybe like tech and others application process gather documents you have a job offer from a canadian employer right just like i've explained labor markets impact assessment may be required unless you are exempted from that then you have your proof of funds and you know relevant qualifications no criminal record medical examination biometrics complete application you pay the fees submit biometrics attend interview and wait for your decision which one my hand yeah like is it like too big so now the fourth pathway they call it immigrate you can see it on the ircc website i'm just i think i'm going to put it on the screen i've talked about visits i've talked about coming to study i've talked about work and then the fourth one is immigrate immigrate basically means that you, you are coming to live permanently and that is what is referred to as permanent residency so that's when you hear prp applied so this is what that means so this is basically for long-term stay it's for people that want to live in canada permanently so there are several programs under this pr so this pr now has different branches right <laughs> so you know just like see how that's temporary as visit study work pr has different ones so you can see under it we have them um, express entry family sponsorship provision nomination there are different ones under the express entry the express entry includes you know like the federal skilled worker that's like um you know like a corporate job in nigeria right the federal skilled trade or the federal skilled trades that's like maybe more and stuff and then we have canadian experience class that's all under express entry those are like the different sub different streams that people can use to enter that express entry pool they call it like streams right so it could be from Oh, I'm an accountant in Nigeria. That is under federal skilled worker. Oh, I'm a farmer in Nigeria. That's under federal skilled trades. Oh, I have experience. I have Canadian experience already. I worked with Canada. That's Canadian experience class. Five alive, It's also one dollar. I'm surely taking this. So, um, on that the same pr that I mentioned that's permanent residency we also have something called provincial nominee program that's aside express entry right this one is called pmp so it's basically like based on the province provinces like states right here like state and capital kind of thing here so based on the province specific requirements you apply to the province or territory where you want to live if nominated you can apply for permanent residency now provinces and territories in canada can nominate individuals who want to live in specific province you will need to live in that province for a certain period before you can move elsewhere in canada this can be a faster route to pr compared to federal program this is basically saying that 
if it's PMP, like provincial nomination, um, you can apply to a particular state. That means province, right, in Canada, and say, okay, I want to stay in this particular state for a while. You should admit, collect me, admit me, right? Sometimes also those states can, you know, like request for people. So you can apply like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what that one means. Then there's another one called family sp sponsorship under PR2. Remember, for this family sponsorship, it just means that maybe you have like a Canadian citizen here or you have somebody that is a permanent resident that can sponsor you to come. That one has a lot of factors. So you can't just sponsor anybody. There's a lot of rules and regulation on that that I'm not going to go into in, in this video. So now for other programs, we have other programs such as Atlantic Immigration Program, Rural and Northern Immigration Pilots. This is just basically like maybe there are some rural areas in Canada that they want people to come and occupy. Maybe in most cases, these places are like the colder region like they're always cold compared to other province right so they want people to come and occupy they have other programs too like caregivers that's like support workers we have business startups agricultural it's called agri food pilot we have french that's called francophone immigration who that can speak french very well too they have like a separate immigration this thing under pr then lastly we also have refugees or asylum that's like maybe for asylum you can say uh, they are pursuing your country or um there's a threat to your life in your country so you should please open the door for me that kind of thing you get so um, what do you have mentioned two things west evaluation and point system west evaluation is basically world education services it means you have to get your education credentials recognized in canada so your bsc in nigeria for example west as the education system in canada have to evaluate it to confirm that okay bs is also bsc here here as well let me give you an example i did i can so i can it's called institute of chartered accountants of nigeria now before you get the final qualification of high can that's the professional stage which is ace and um, if you start from the basic which is aat that aat certificate for example in canada is equivalent to diploma compared to the main certificate which is ace which is not recognized here at all i don't know if you get me but <laughs> anybody that is familiar with accounting we know what i mean and if you can't relate just don't bother but you get the gist of they will just basically evaluate you result to ensure that your qualifications aligns with that of canadian standards second thing i'm talking about is point system it is otherwise known as crs score comprehensive ranking system it's grammar it's just basically saying that to get express entry pr yeah which is like the end product for most people they assess you on points like they consider different factors right like the age education work experience and language skills there are different things that will add to those points that express entry you have to be inside a pool inside that pool they use points system to evaluate people for example oh i have bsc in whatever country i'm coming from maybe nigeria maybe bsc is 7 points 30 points i'm just giving example so that will add to your point if you have a higher education have masters that's an additional point for you inside the pool your age if you are below 30 so you have more points if you are above 30 it affects your score being younger means more points if you are in your 30s like us not the best <laughs> so <laughs> if you're in your thirties, just know that the more the plus that you're reaching, uh -huh, it will be dropping your points like that. So if you're in your twenties, gather everything that you can gather now and start preparing to come to Canada. That's like more opportunity, right? If you have Canadian experience, Canadian work experience, that's an additional point. Your language skills, which is your English test, I E L T S or self people, they want to evaluate or oh, how fluent you are in speaking reading writing and listening that one too whatever point you get it has to your points if you can speak french ah la <laughs> la good la good for you <laughs> meaning <laughs> that's good for you okay so an extra point for you and then if you also have family in canada like the family that is like maybe pr or citizen like obviously that's an additional point for you like your immediate family knew it's not the brother of the nephew of the uncle of the somebody so all of these things i mentioned can also increase your points in the express entry pool now for the application process you create an express entry profile and submit it online then you complete the crs then if you receive invitation to apply that's called ita then you can submit a complete application for pr the process is also the same from determining your eligibility to gathering your documents complete sub application submit biometrics attend interview and then you wait for decision now, now to the next thing right i've given you a breakdown of the pathways the next thing is 
cost of relocation. Cost of relocating to Canada varies depending on the pathway you choose. Here is like a rough estimate, you know, considering different expenses you like from application fee to biometrics to medicals or proof of funds and the like. So let's start from study route. Right? If you're coming to study, I think this is like the most expensive actually. Tuition fee, that's school fees, plus living expenses. Roughly, cha, the rough estimate is if you hear me say CAD, Canadian dollars, that's what it means 18,000 Canadian dollars. So from 18,000 Canadian dollars to 52,000 Canadian dollars per year. I'm from Nigeria, right? So you may hear me say Naira a lot. So this amount in Naira roughly um, is like 18 million Naira to 52 million Naira. If you come through work, considering all the fees, application, travel expense, settlement funds, and proof of fund, and sometimes you don't need proof of fund for work, but because you already have work here, right? Meaning you most likely not be stranded, but obviously you have to have proof of fund, right? For your own uh, <laughs> peace. You might want to just have savings pay just in case you get so roughly estimate for work is like ten thousand CAD to forty thousand CAD. That's like ten million to forty million. Now for PR, that's for permanent residence. From application fee to settlement, medicals, travel, all those things. And depending on your family size, it's roughly like sixteen thousand CAD to fifty thousand CAD. That's like sixteen million to fifty thousand million. I say fifty thousand million. <laughs> to 50 million naira and can be more now because proof of fund for family of seven is like 38 million naira this part too was one dollar the last one is visitor like if you are coming on a visit obviously this is the cheapest of all the pathways because you are just coming for a short period of time according to the visa type <laughs> so depending on your length of stay like how long you're going to be staying in canada then flight tickets flight tickets and other factors so let's just say roughly like 5,000 cad to like 10,000 cad that's like 5 million to 10 million ish all of this is still rough estimate because i know cad that's canadian dollars to never right now is like 1,000 plus so for me i'm using just 1,000 to estimate it now let's go to comparing like friends pathways so let's talk about the pros and cons the advantages and disadvantages of these pathways right differences in terms of like time money job offer um to get pr work or study permits and um, obviously this one provides you like a pathway to canadian education like because you came to study here you get to have canadian education and eventually you get to migrate to PR, that's permanent residency, through something called PGWP, postgraduate work permits, meaning post-graduation, like after you graduate from whether it's BSc, you went to Canada to study or master's that you came to do, you will get a work permit, that's PGWP. Another way that you can get PR through study is CEC, Canadian Experience. You know after getting the work permit you can now work right so and after working that means you already have the canadian experience so you can also use that to apply for pr or provincial nominee pnp another um advantage for student um, study permits study routes is it allows you bring family members so it allows you study and you can work part-time during your studies and full-time during your breaks which one is it just you know? that's talks. That's okay However, the cons to this is high tuition fee, like the school fees is expensive. You must maintain full-time studies, student status. And then you have limited work hours. Basically requires financial stability to support your living costs during studies. For visitors visa, uh, it's easier, it's the easiest and quicker, quicker way to come to Canada. Obviously for a short time stay, right? You cannot work or study on a visitor's visa. It's limited to a temporary state, I think like three to six months. So there's no direct pathway to PR. I understand that some people say, oh, this is this, like, that one is like a different topic on entirely. But let me just chip this in to say, imagine people that have been in Canada that have been looking for work and they've not gotten work for like maybe three months, six months, some people even one year right so imagine somebody that is coming to visit within three to six months how do you want to get job within that uh, period and let me tell you something so like in the process of getting job they will ask you what kind of visa are you holding if you tell them visitors visa just know that because you tell them work visa safe they're asking you what is the expiry date like when is the expiring so that they can put one or two together to know whether they give you the job or not so i, I hope you understand that so before i think before that thing works but now because the job market and everything is becoming you know saturated and intense a lot of things are getting more difficult right so this one is almost like a <laughs> no-brainer like just abort mission abort mission if you are saying that you want to use visitors visa to 
come and work so that you will not be frustrated right because by the time your visa expires you know what that means right you know the dream so anyway so that up next we have the work permit so for this one it helps you gain valuable canadian work experience potential employer sponsorship for pr from work gets pr through programs like canadian experience or provincial nominee pnp or even stem stem is like i'll put the for on the screen it's for like i think people that are in tech some other distance however the downside to this is that obviously you are going to require a job offer without a job offer there's no lma without lma there's no work permit then the close work permit would limit your job flexibility last downside is like it's a temporary status still it requires renewal or transition to pr for permanent residency right you have a permanent status with the right to live and work anywhere in canada there's access to health care and social benefits actually even um, for work and i think study too there's actually access to health care and social benefits some just that there are some other benefits that only PR and we citizens obviously can enjoy. The downside to this is that it's a rigorous and competitive application process. Like before you eventually get PR, you see some people being on it for two years, one year, three years. Although some people's own is also like six months, but I think the minimum is like I don't know if there's three months, but it requires meeting specific criteria. Like just like I said, the whole process is tedious, competitive, lengthy process. Like to, you can sweat plenty before you get to that stage, but when you get it, oh, how sweet. From PMP to PR, just apply for your PR using that nomination at province and which can give you additional points in the express entry pool. It's $12.30. Lastly, a recap and like an advice. Number one, I will say you should understand the visa types that is available for you and the one that you think you can work with based on your situation and the factors I've mentioned earlier. So you can choose between visitor, study, work or permanent residency right to research and prepare for your eligibility the requirements i've talked about that as well. then for financial preparation i feel like this is very major so you have to ensure that you have enough funds to support yourself and your family during the relocation and even the initial settlement process like finance goody money go then you gather your required documents your education credentials your certificates transcripts for fund i mentioned it is part of your financial preparation you would need your bank statements or other financial documents for this submit your application so after your approval you get your confirmation and you prepare for departure <laughs> yeah when you arrive in canada i have a separate video for things that you need to do when you get here i would also you know encourage that you consult the official sources which is like ircc website and you know I, I encourage you to just play around the site even if you are not preparing to come to canada now just check so that you can see for yourself right they are always updating their information and guidelines so you have to stay up to date with the latest immigration policies and requirements from their website i would also say seek professional professional assistance when necessary i know the process is like very complex but you have to also be careful because we've had series of maybe fake or scam agents so you need to consider a licensed immigration consultant but one thing about this one is it can be very expensive so majorly like the beginning of the process is things that you can do yourself like going to the website and reading through but i understand that it might not be easy for everybody right licensed immigration consultants can help you navigate the complex process right just ensure that they are accredited right if you decide to use one so there's this woman and a child she wanted to get popcorn out but it was hop and she was not told so she now told her as well to help her i think she looks like me like this we that we are not all gang <laughs> she was not smiling that we are not smiling back that no big deal but it was just funny i hope this detailed overview summary help you understand and can help you navigate your journey so thank you for watching i hope this video helps simplify the process of moving to canada if you have any question or you need further information feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below um i'm going to answer to the best of my ability because like i said earlier i'm not a licensed immigration consultant so don't forget to like share subscribe for more helpful contents and i wish you good luck with your journey to canada thanks for watching again bye see you guys in my next video 50 dollars worth of grocery shop no fees